Thailand. When you think of Thailand, you're probably thinking of lounging on the beach of Phuket, but there's a lot more to Thailand than just beaches. In northern Thailand, in the mountainous region near Chiang Mai, there's a national park called Doi Intanon. It's also the name of the tallest mountain in all of Thailand. The park opens at 5.30, it's only $9 to get in, and we rented a car to get there for $25. We recommend you get there as soon as possible because there's so many different waterfalls and so many different trails that you want to maximize the day and see as much as you can. Not to mention the trailheads, as some of the trails close at like 4 p.m. and the whole park shuts down at 6.30 p.m. Although it is an hour and a half drive away from Chiang Mai, if you're an outdoorsy person and you need a break from the hustle bustle of the city, it's definitely worth your time. The road is pretty steep to get to the summit, so my little car is just chugging along. I believe in it, so we're gonna get there. I've gone to manual shifting on an automatic. Have you guys seen Fern Gully? If you've seen Fern Gully, then you'll understand this national park near Chiang Mai in northern Thailand. Uh, we're not really sure how to pronounce it, but it's maybe Doi Intanon. Doi Intanon. We'll get the right pronunciation, but it's the, the highest mountain uh, in all of Thailand. And you're essentially in a cloud forest. There's more species of moss here than anywhere in the world. So it's super cool. But yeah, Fern Gully. If you've seen Fern Gully, that's what I feel like we're in. Like, This is probably the most lush environment I've ever been in as far as um, how moist and wet and cool and misty and mossy everything is. This probably takes the cake for green. The for words green. <laughs> green and lush are the words that come to mind for this. Doi Intanon, the H is silent, it's not pronounced Doi Intanon. Highest peak in Thailand, that's what this national park is. Chiang Mai, Chiang Mai, this is like an hour and a half out of Chiang Mai. Chiang Mai is the second biggest city in Thailand, so there is a lot of hustle and bustle, noise, chaos, activity, energy. But if you want to get away from that, then you can just drive here. If you come in the middle of the week like we are, avoid the weekends, obviously avoid holidays. Um, it's not crowded at all, it is super peaceful, very quiet, all you hear is the birds, uh, the watershed, slight trickles of waterfalls. And there's like a construction going on back there. That's not very peaceful, but it's just nice. That's all. That's all I want to tell you. I want you to know how nice it is. So that summit trail that we just did was less than, less than a kilometer, so a 15 minute hike. There's much longer trails that require guides. There's waterfalls, there's a lot to see, so we gotta go see it. It's about three o'clock now, so after our little hike, we had to get a snacky snack. It's brown stuff. I thought it was like like a teriyaki, yakiniku, <laughs> soy bit. Oh my god, it's just fire. Fire from the <laughs> devil himself. We went all through India and I ate curry and I thought I did... Oh god, I'm like drooling. <laughs> Let me control my saliva. But this is the second time in Thailand that I've been like in pain. A short distance from the summit trail, which takes you like no time at all. There is Kume Pan Nature Trail. It's about three kilometers. You have to hire a local guide for like uh, 200 baht. And I don't know about the elevation change. It says it'll take two to four hours, so we'll see. So on this trail, there's like over a dozen points of interest. And I really like our guide so far because she's just like moving quick from point to point and she stops look at it take your pictures take your video let's go so 
Every little point of interest has some information for you, like the fact that we're in a cloud forest and all the plants just kind of absorb, absorb. <laughs> all the plants just absorb the moisture right out of the air. Yeah, it took us an hour and 15 minutes. It said two to four hours for this trail because it's about three kilometers. It was actually, there's some pretty steep stuff. We have this problem where if there's like a metric for how people normally do something, we're like, well, we have to do it better. But we weren't just like running. We were just walking at a good pace, taking our photos. We stopped. Really fun. I really like it. And this is probably perfect to do after you do the summit, come down here and do this. They close the trailhead at four though. So make sure you're here with enough time. Slightly farther down from the summit, there's two pagodas, Buddhist places of worship, the king and queen's pagodas. The queen's pagoda is pretty cool. Very beautiful inside. I can't wait to see what the king's pagoda has to offer. But she has a really nice little garden over here with some fountains. It's pretty nice. Nurturing the King's Pagoda is like warrior, powerful, and very different, darker tones, not so many purples and pinks. But they're both very cool in their own way. So there's lots of waterfalls in this national park. Unfortunately, everything closes around five, so we're here like 20 minutes before it closes, which is perfect because it looks absolutely beautiful right now. It's pretty cool too for this waterfall. You just drive right up to it, get out of your car, and then walk up a few stairs. So, super accessible. Hold on, I gotta take some photos. Oh my gosh, so pretty. I think we got about as much video of this waterfall as you could possibly get. And the whole park's pretty much closed now, so we need to get out of here before someone comes and tells us to get out of here. But look at how pretty it is. Maybe this area isn't super trendy right now, but I bet it will be, because we're literally the only car here. 